Welcome Pisces to your in-depth monthly forecast for March 2024 for the Sun or the Ascendant. I'm going to give you some standout details to look out for but please stay with me I will explore in much greater depth all the ins and outs particularly relevant to your sign. The most exciting thing to tell you I think is the super new moon in your sign on the 10th which forges a sparkling alliance to Uranus. But you've also got Venus arriving on the 11th and Mars on the 22nd so I really can't wait to share all of that with you because it's really really thrilling stuff. If you would like to ascend above this zodiac broadcast and understand what's going on in your personal astrology based on your unique birth data. If you share with me your time, date and place or date and place, I can produce for you your life roadmap report. This will give you searing insights into the patterns that have played out in your life so far and a much more intimate understanding of how to work with them and seize opportunities going forwards. In my special package of 30% off, you can also get your 12 month transit forecast. This is an analysis of the moving planets in the sky and how they're interacting with your unique blueprint. So really exciting. Please see the link below. If you've yet to subscribe to my channel, I'd be honored if you did so now. And also please feel very welcome to comment and interact with me. So Pisces, as you make your way into March, the sun, Mercury, the planet of communication, Saturn and Neptune are all in your sign. Very much Pisces season. Think back a year ago though, Saturn had only just arrived on March the 7th in the sign of Pisces. What have you experienced in that time? What's changed? What Saturn in the first house often does is provide a little bit less energy, but the energy we do have we have to focus in a very narrow and precise way on the things that are really important. So it's asked you to strip down your world a little bit and focus on what's really essential. But as you start this new month, the midpoint, a critical degree in astrology between the sun and the moon is at 10 degrees in Capricorn, which for you is very friendly. It's very much to do with your future, but it's forging an amazing link with your traditional ruler of Jupiter. So there is a sense that your thinking can be really inspired right at the start of March. And even if your physical vitality has been a little low, particularly when the sun applied to Saturn on the 28th of February, as you make your way into the new month, Jupiter also links to the sun and Saturn in your sign. So you get some uplift from Jupiter in two different ways. Also on the 5th, a fantastic link between the North Node and Chiron. If you've ever struggled in some way to really feel that you're worthwhile or you found that um, your appreciation of life is very dependent on how much money you have behind you, it could be that Chiron has had an impact on you in that way. Certainly in terms of your overall zodiac sign, Chiron in Aries has been asking you to work on your sense of self-worth. But the link between the North Node and Chiron could be good for your bank balance. And there could be more good news coming later in the month. But from week two, the sun starts to interact with the innovative and electric energies of Uranus. But because the sun is in your sign, you probably have to take the initiative. Sometimes you're someone who's very, very supportive to others. Yours is the 12th zodiac sign. It's the sign of culmination in the spiritual sense because it's where the sun's coming to the end of its journey before reigniting the beginning of its journey, which of course happens with the spring equinox. And this March, it's on the 20th of March and the sun returns to the start of the journey. So it can be a reflective sign, Pisces. So what you're needing to do this month is seize the moment. And that's why Venus pitching up on the 11th and Mars on the 22nd are so important because obviously with Saturn there, at times it may feel that you're having to push a boulder up the hill. It may not feel that things are developing at the pace you want. It may feel that you're having to rationalize your life to such a degree and you don't really have a lot of energy or physical vitality to achieve what you want. So therefore, 
the super new moon of the 10th and it's linked to the sparkling energy of Uranus is saying you have to take the lead it's not about being supportive to others you know you can be a fantastic uh, asset in terms of psychological hair, uh, psychological care, medical support, spiritual or healing environments. Very often many psychics have a lot of 12th house or Pisces. So those instinctive energies are important, but now you're being asked to take a firm grip on your life direction and go with it quickly with Uranus's lightning hell. Don't think too much. Mercury moves into your second house on the 10th too, that could be good for your finances, but Venus moving into your sign on the 11th is going to be good in terms of your relationship situation. Because since Pluto moved into your 12th house on the 21st of January, you may have been asking yourself some serious questions about who you can really rely upon, who's trustworthy, who's really got your back. And there may have been some disappointments. It doesn't necessarily mean that there's been any kind of dramatic falling out there may have been a drift in certain relationships or a sense that there's some kind of disorientation and uncertainty about who's really staying in touch with you or perhaps you've just felt more reticent and distant so venus moving into your sign brings you into the moment if there has been a separation in a relationship this can be a line in the sand but also it's a great time to give yourself a glamorous new makeover so venus moving into your sign along with the new moon is very auspicious indeed but doesn't necessarily mean that you can rush anything venus does align with saturn on the 21st if you were thinking about having any kind of uh, uh, procedure to do with beauty and looks, probably not the best date, the 21st, to be really honest. Um, not the best dates to go and see a new hairdresser that you don't know that doesn't know when to stop snipping. I've had that a few times. Um, but seriously, Venus does start to build an alliance with Jupiter from the 22nd to the 27th which could be extraordinarily beneficial to you. And you can enjoy some very flirty, but uplifting conversations. Now the sun is going to align with your other ruler of Neptune from the 14th to the 19th. Energy may drop off a little bit, don't worry. You could feel a little bit more sensitive to, your, to the atmosphere. Remember this part of the month, you're being asked to really focus on what's important to you and not be distracted by other people too much but then on the 20th we have that spring equinox the sun moves to aries and you can start to really think look i'm achieving things here i'm making progress i'm creating some new foundations for myself and mars hustling into your sign on the 22nd is going to bring a lot of vitality so if you have felt at times, particularly towards the end of February, a little bit low in vibe, mood, and, and, and just drive, it wouldn't be a surprise. So it's definitely going to be coming back as this month goes on. But that spring equinox also forges a link with Pluto. And because it's the second house, the sun moving in Aries, and Pluto is in the 12th, it's asking you to analyze where you get value in your life. Now often it is by being a giver, but sometimes if we give so much to others, we can end up feeling empty. And it's that old adage, you can't pour from an empty jug. So be aware of that, because what the sun moving into Aries is asking you to do is really get your foundations right for you personally. And because the lunar eclipse on the 25th is accenting the uh, two axes across your second and eighth house with the eclipse in the eighth just driving yourself into the ground to earn money because that feels the right thing to do but if you're doing too much you're burning yourself out is not valuable so Pluto feeds into the lunar eclipse as well so Pluto is asking you to understand much more why you often end up in very psychological support roles is it in some ways because of your sense of worth and that takes us back to that connection between the north node and also uh, chiron now by the end of the month jupiter and uranus 
start to edge closer together for the last couple of days going to become exact on the 21st of April goes on into early May a glittering combination which hasn't happened for 14 years and for you it's very much about your ideas but you can see your ideas have to feed into your sense of self-worth but not necessarily only into earning more money because the sun going into that second house and obviously the eclipse on the 8th can see you trying to you know bring more revenue in to make you feel more secure totally understandable but not if you're burn burning the midnight oil doing lots of support work that doesn't really help you to showcase your individuality so there's the themes for this month it's very important that you take your talent flair and artistry and personality powers seriously this is your time it is starting some things off there could be, if you've had a breakup in a relationship, a completely new beginning with Venus and Mars in your sign where you give yourself some kind of re, uh, uh, reset. And, but the reset can be about coming into your power and not just be so sacrificing, which is a very Piscean trait. And then as the month goes on, starting to value what you do do for others not just in material terms and that's really the lesson that Pluto is asking you to embrace but you can still have some fantastic ideas this month some great conversations particularly with Venus and Jupiter in that lovely sextile it could be that if you're an artistic or creative Pisces some kind of outlet or opportunity is going to evolve for you that really gives you a major lift